you ever been afraid of something you couldn't see? Terrified of something you couldn't touch? Or paralyzed by something that didn't exist? I think it's funny the things that we're afraid of. The dark, deep water when we can't see the bottom, even the future freaks us out when we don't know what might happen. And most of our fears, no matter how ridiculous they might be, have one thing in common. The unknown. I mean, the unknown freaks us out. We're comfortable, even confident when we know what the outcome is going to be. But when we have no idea, and the unknown bothers us, it makes us afraid. It paralyzes us with fear. Like one time I remember when I was a little boy, I climbed up on the roof of my parents' house and I have no idea how I figured out how to get up there. But after I got up there, I was kind of hanging out, I realized there's no easy way down. Finally, my dad came outside and saw that I was stuck on the roof. And he said, Adam, just jump and I'll catch you. Now, in my little six-year-old mind, I was thinking, Dad, oh my gosh, what if you don't catch me? I was thinking about all the possible what ifs. If I jump wrong, if I slip, and in the middle of all my fears, my dad interrupted me and said, Adam, just jump. And honestly, Ever since then, I can't really remember a time where I've jumped without knowing the outcome. I mean, we kind of learn to live our lives in a safe, comfortable, predictable way, don't we? But what about you? Does the fear of the unknown keep you living safely, comfortably, you know, out of harm's way, no risks? Then I would argue, no rewards. There's a story in the Old Testament about two young guys named Joshua and Caleb who weren't all about the comfort and safety of a normal life. They were risk takers. You see, there are people, the Israelites, were wandering around the desert trying to find a place that they could settle and call home. Now, they had a great thing going for them, and that is that God had already chosen a place for them to settle down. It was called the Promised Land, and the Bible says this place was amazing. We also know that this place was referred to as a land flowing with milk and honey. Now, I personally would have probably chosen Taco Bell or KFC, but this is a major upgrade because they've been wandering around the desert for years eating locusts and sand. I mean, this is pretty much a no-brainer. The scripture also says that this place was so plentiful with resources that the fruit, like for instance the grapes, had to be carried by two full-grown men. Those are some huge grapes. Scripture also goes on to say that this land was excellent for farming and growing crops. I mean, this place was literally paradise. So a guy named Moses, who, who was actually the leader of Israel at this time, calls Joshua and Caleb and 10 other guys together and says, okay, guys, I'm sending you 12 out to this promised land. I want you to go scout it out, see what's in it, see how the crops are, see if there are trees, and I want you guys to come back and report everything you find to me. So man, Joshua, Caleb, and the 10 other guys pack up their stuff and they make the journey to go check out the Promised Land. When they arrive, all of their hopes and dreams come true because when they get there, man, they see trees, they see fruit, they see that the land is excellent for farming and growing crops. They're like high five in, they're excited. Man, these guys are pumped. But there's just one catch. When they get there, they discover that cities have already been built there and people are living in them. Oh yeah, and the people, they're giants. I mean, just stop and picture this scene in your own head for a second. These guys are running around, having a great time, high-fiving, eating fruit. 
I mean, these guys are so excited they found this land and then one of them who is standing up on top of a hill shouts to the others and says, you guys might want to come and take a look at this. And there, standing on top of a hill, are these 12 guys who are looking down at these giant walls with giant people in them. Knots in their stomachs and disappointment all over their faces. I mean, this was supposed to be their land, the place that God promised them that they could settle and live. And now they see that these huge people inhabit this place. I mean, it's not like they could just go right down next door and be, and be neighbors with them. I mean, they could be you know, enslaved or killed. I mean, all these thoughts are running through their heads as the 12 gather their stuff and start to head back to camp. You know, often, right before God will do something unbelievable in your life, fear will start to creep in and almost try to convince you that the risk is just too great. I mean, it's too dark. You'll avoid taking spiritual risks. You'll see the giants in your promised land and you'll turn around and walk away. And instead of just trusting God for incredible spiritual rewards, you focus on the risk and the fear of the unknown claims another life that God could have used to do something incredible. I was afraid once. It was the day of my sophomore year of high school. I was sitting around a campfire with a bunch of my friends from church. I really, I really don't remember what all they were talking about. They were telling jokes and hanging out laughing, having a good time. Uh, all I can remember about that night is God and I were having this conversation inside of my head. Uh, I mean, all, all the stuff that they were doing was kind of a blur. Uh, all I could hear in my head that night was God. And I kind of tried to, you know, like laugh and and blend in like you know, nothing was wrong with me, like I wasn't affected by what was going on inside me, but it was like in the deepest part of my soul, God was trying to have this conversation with me. I mean, I, I knew God's message to me that night was, was that I needed to, uh, the next day at school, to live differently. You see, I, I mean, I was, I was a Christian, uh, but honestly, if you looked at my life, the things I did, the things I said, uh, wouldn't reflect that at all. And uh, that night, God showed me my promised land. I mean, it was this place where, where I would see firsthand my friends coming to know and follow Christ where self-image would you know, disappear and God's image would shine through me. And this was a place that I'd, I'd never been before spiritually. I mean, to be honest, up until this point, I'd spent my whole time at school trying to make myself look good, you know, in, enjoying popularity, watching as my reputation soared, all of it living in darkness. And now here was God in the middle of this field showing me what my life could look like if I would leave the darkness and step into his light. I mean, God was showing me what my life would look like if I would just let go of all my fears and give everything to him. And much like this new promised land looked to the Israelites and this place for me spiritually in my life looked amazing. And just as God had shown me this, this glimpse, the spiritual place that He wanted to take me, this, you know, my promised land, this land of influence with my friends, just, just as I had seen a glimpse of this, my stomach uh, began to tighten. And I, man, I knew that night that I had to make a decision that either I would keep living for myself or I would give in and just say, God, man, take my life. I want to see 
what you can do through me. So that night I made the decision. I knew what I, I knew what I had to do. And you'll never believe what happened. Nothing. Nothing. See, I put it off until the next year, and then the next year came, and I put it off again, and then all of us were out of school, and we went our separate ways, and I haven't seen many of them since. And I'll regret that forever. What about you? I mean, what risk is God asking you to take that you haven't taken yet? I mean, for some of you, maybe it's to get over your self-image. I mean, maybe up until this point, all you've cared about is how you look to others, your popularity, your reputation. But what, what, what happens? What would happen if you just said, you know what, God, take my life. I don't care about any of that. Use me. How many of your friends could be impacted for Christ? For others of you, maybe God is calling you away from a relationship right now that's just totally gotten you off track spiritually. And maybe this is a risk for you because you've never been alone. For others of you, and you're afraid because you don't want to tell your family or your parents that you're deciding to follow Christ. I mean, this is a risk. They've known you your whole life. They know everything about you. These are the people that are the closest to you. What are they gonna say even right now? The fear of the unknown is starting to creep into some of your heads and tell you that God's rewards just aren't worth the risks. Don't walk that way. It's too dark. You can't see what's ahead. Don't jump. You'll never make it. You can't see the bottom. God, what are you asking me to do? Joshua and Caleb, however, weren't afraid. You see, they trusted God and knew that if God said the land was theirs, that it was. And even if they had to go and fight giants, that God would be with them. And for them, the reward of having their own land, no more wandering, no more desert, was worth the risk. The story goes on and we find out that Moses, who remember was the leader of Israel, now decides to name Joshua as the new leader. And Joshua and Caleb are to lead the people of Israel into the promised land. In fact, in Deuteronomy 31, 7 and 8, it says this, Be strong and courageous. For you must go with this people into the land that the Lord swore to their forefathers to give them. And you must divide it among them as their inheritance. The Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you or forsake you. Don't be discouraged. Don't be afraid. I was afraid once. But never again. But what about you? What spiritual risk does God want you to take? What's the giant in your promised land? Is the fear of the unknown keeping you safe? Or do God's rewards call out for you to leave what's known, to leave what's comfortable, to take a risk and trust God? For God Himself goes before you. He'll be with you. He'll never leave you or forsake you. Don't be afraid.